A Kansas City ministry with ties to Mike Bickle celebrates 25 years of IHOP KC despite the sexual abuse controversy. Jack Deere's letter condemning Kansas City Fellowship. And vintage footage of Augustine Alcala and Bob Jones prophesying over Mike Bickle. And we'll catch up with all the funny business on Twitter. All that and more today on this episode of Church Entrepreneurs. Let's get into this. Welcome to this episode of Church Entrepreneurs Podcast. My name is Richard Moore. In this podcast, I talk about everything that's moving me in relation to church and theology, hopefully to empower you in your ministry, church, theological understanding, and most importantly, your personal growth in Christ. Hey, before we get going, if you wouldn't mind doing me a huge favor and clicking the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and smashing that bell, it helps YouTube get this content out to more people. Thanks so much. So welcome, ladies and gents. Today, we're going to flip over to Twitter. Most of the time, we're going to be spending on Twitter. There's a lot of stuff going on. I am always behind. There's so much stuff going on. I can't keep up. And Twitter has a lot of stuff that is going on, especially in regards to the Mike Bickle and IHOP situation. I've just kind of been inundated. I've really been able to connect with people over the Twitterverse who are covering this way better than I am. And I just want to go over there and highlight some of those things that I saw that I thought were important. So the first thing, let's jump over here to my desktop. I wanted to bring up this Kansas City ministry. This is a a more recent article by the Roy's Report by Rebecca Hopkins. Thank you guys at Roy's Report for continuing to cover this. Don't let this stuff die. And thank you for actually everybody on Twitter as well. I'll I'll bring up names calling for a third party investigation, continuing to push. I don't think it'll happen, honestly, because the updates from last show, if you look at the last shows, they have pulled their prophetic history. They have basically said they're shutting down and going to reopen in another rebranding sort of kind of thing. I don't know. It's kind of convoluted, but... I don't think they're doing any internal investigations. I think they're done. They're closing the doors and doing something else, reopening in another way. So whether that's rebranding or whatever you want to call it, it's not going to be the way it was as a ministry. So here we go. This is uh, Roy's report. Rebecca Hopkins, thanks so much again for covering this. Kansas City Ministry with ties to Mike Bickle celebrates 25th anniversary of IHOP KC despite sexual abuse. Go over there and check this article out. I had time to let my computer read it to me. I'm literally like at the maximum everything I can do. (laughs) I hope that uh, this blesses y'all in some way and helps you. I have a regular ministry. This is a side gig. I have a full-time ministry that I'm doing. All this stuff is just in my free time. It's overwhelming to some of my free time, but now anyways, that's not me whining or complaining. Honestly, that's just me saying I'm at the max. I I don't have a broader bandwidth, but please keep sending me stuff. I'll try to cover stuff. I just will try to do my best. So here is this Hope City. I just cover it real quick. Hope City had a celebration, a 25-year celebration. There was a recording in it, leaked recording. I listened to a bit of it. Kind of funny bit because it actually sounds like someone's in the bathroom at the first, at the beginning. I don't know who it is, where it's come from, what the source is. Honestly, uh, I can't follow this anymore. It's so broad and so sweeping. But the recording sounds like they've gone to the restroom and they're leaving. And then they go in and they start celebrating. And they have like an hour of worship. I, I, I don't actually know how, how long the worship is. But... They have worship and then they go into the thing. And I just, I stop when they said, we want to thank Mike Bickle. I just, I, I couldn't anymore. You know, um, I want to thank. And so then there's just all sorts of stuff here. It's his sister's church, sister's ministry, sister's whatever. I don't know. Hope City, it's a prayer house. I don't really know beyond that. Then 
they had some words. I think uh, Misty Edwards led worship. Interesting because I don't know if she's turned away from her inappropriate affair that she had. I don't need to make more comments on that. That's all out there. Roy's report has also reported on that. So it's just disheartening, really, really disheartening. And then they have uh, Isaac Bennett speaking on, we're going to cover that today. He made a few statements on the prophetic history of IHOP KC, which is included Bob Jones. So that's just right up there at the front. So we're going to go from the oldest to the newest, sort of the most oldest news to the newest and uh, stick around to the end because I've got some stuff from Protestia. It is hilarious and woke preacher clips. So I've got some bonus info, bonus material at the end. So that's going to be fun. It's hilarious. Stick around. So here we go. We're going to watch this. This is Augustine Alcala, the originator of the Black Horse Prophecy. And uh, so he is, the, I don't know, Austin Roberts, man. What a find. Where did you get this material? I wanted to cover this because this is apparently the guy who basically started it all. I think he drove was driving by Mike Bickle's office or something and pulled over and Gate went into his office and said, God has this word for you. I'm prophesying this, that, the other thing. I don't really know who this guy is. Besides, I have never, I've just heard of him. I've never seen a video, never seen any material, never heard an audio recording about the guy, but Mike Bickle has talked about it. It's been talked about at quite some length, written about by, uh, it's been written about by Ernie Gruen, I believe as well. So Austin says he's the originator of the Black Horse Prophecy here. I, wow. And um, he prophesies here to D Mike and Diane Bickle just months after leaving Tammy in St. Louis after molesting her since age 14. Wow. So here we go. Let's have a look. This is Augustine Akala, one of the original prophetic voices that made Mike want to start this thing. And God said, Moses, I'm going to send you an angel. And Moses said, thank you, but no thank you, Lord. Uh, I don't need an angel. I want you. Hello. I have respect for angels. I like when they come, Michael, Gabriel, and angel, and give me their message and the truth. It's nice. And Mike, you stop worrying so much. And God has a new rest for you today. That's right. You've been worrying too much, buddy. There's too much pressure coming on the right and the left side. Okay, so interesting. He starts off with like a Moses. And I don't know, why, why do these guys scream all the time? Anyways, screaming about Moses or something. Moses wants God's presence, I guess. Uh, he doesn't want to just have an angel. Why can I, Why would I have an angel? Why do I want an angel when I can have you? <sighs> kind of. Maybe we're missing context. So I would admit we're missing context there. But anyways. You have been wondering what to do. The Lord says, I've called you to work and I've called you to battle, but you must rest in the faith. Okay. So the Lord. God has allowed me. The Lord has called him to battle and to wrestle and to. All right. So this is God telling him again. Augustine Akala is just trying to keep his prophetic voice going, to keep his prophetic mojo, to make sure he's in the relevance. So I, I think he's passed away. I, I don't even know. I don't know when he passed away. But anyways, uh, he's trying to keep that prophetic utterance thing going, just always saying, the Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says. And actually, um, you know, again, Sam Storms has said that thus saith the Lord is not cool. So we're going to have a prophetic, thus saith the Lord ticker to count how many times he says, thus saith the Lord in this show, just real, just so you can follow along. So Sam Storms has said, thus saith the Lord is not cool, not how we ought to do prophecy, but that is the form of how IHOP and other prophetic movements do prophecy. It is thus saith the Lord. They may not say thus saith the Lord. That is sort of old English King James, King Jimmy type English, but it is the same thing. The Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says, it's thus saith the Lord. So we're going to have a prophetic ticker to make sure we keep track of how many times he says, thus saith the Lord. And Mike, you stop worrying so much. And God has a new rest for you today. Amen. That's right. You've been worrying too much, buddy. There's too much pressure coming on the right and the left side. And you have been wondering what to do. The Lord says... <laughs> 
I've called you to work and I've called you to battle, but you must rest in the faith to know that God has allowed me just to be a part of what God is yet doing and yet shall do. Hallelujah. Mike, I'm sorry, I never do this, but I have to do this. <laughs> Mike and Diane, please stand up. I just don't do this. You don't know what this does to me. But God said do it. Behold, saith the Lord, the crown that I has been speaking of, saith the Lord, is the crown of kingship. For behold, saith the Lord, you have understood the ministry of priesthood, saith the Lord, and you have walked in this and received it, saith the Lord. But now you shall receive a new ministry of kingship, saith the Lord, and you will not let go of priesthood, for they will work hand in hand, saith the Lord. For behold, saith the Lord, a greater and new dimension is upon thee even now, saith the Lord. Behold, the sword shall be in one hand, saith the Lord, and you will hold the crown with another hand, saith the Lord, for the enemy will not be able to take it from thee, saith the Lord. For behold, you will battle with the enemy in days to come, saith the Lord, but do not be weary, for you will win victory, and you will be happy, and you will laugh at the devil's face, saith the Lord. For behold, my children, I have called thee, I have chosen thee, and thou hast obeyed, saith the Lord, and even miracles shall Walk, walk through your hands, my servant. Even greater healing shall come to thee, saith the Lord. And you will no longer hesitate and waver to prophesy, saith the Lord. For prophecy shall come in greater dimensions in your life, saith the Lord. Revelation of my prophetic utterance shall take place, saith the Lord. For behold, saith the Lord, continue to keep your eyes on me, saith the Lord. For I shall overwhelm thee. I shall flood thee with great wisdom, saith the Lord. And you will have answers for every problem and solution, say the Lord. For behold, you stop worrying, you stop being over concerned, and behold, a new mantle shall be upon thee, say the Lord. Lord, we lay hands upon our ministers. Hallelujah. And this is for both of you. New dimensions for both of you, Diane. You're not going to be left out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when when there's a wife married to a king, she receives a crown too. Hallelujah. Irabu Satabu Kubarubu. In the name of Jesus, we minister to them. We give them blessing. We give them strength. We give them life and we give them joy. Above all, we give them protection. In the name of Jesus, we loosen this to our ministers. We loosen them to our friends, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing and yet shall do by your spirit. In Jesus' name. I would never countenance or permit or do personally say, God just told me to tell you this. The thus saith the Lord God told me is out of bounds as far as my understanding of New Testament prophetic ministry. Okay. I'm, I'm That's glad, not how we I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I, and I don't say that lightly. I'm glad to hear oh, that. Oh, I'd never do that. We, we, we teach and construct people. Do not say that. If you have a strong sense, an impression, you have a, a, a very deep conviction in your heart that this may be something the Lord has revealed, but I could be wrong. When we deliver prophetic words, you know what we say to people? Don't be nice to me. Tell me, if I'm wrong, I want to be held accountable. Judge it, weigh it. If I missed it, you, you let us know. We would never declare, thus saith the Lord. I think but, that's a misuse of the biblical gift of prophecy. I don't it was not that. normal in Kansas City when Mike was senior pastor. He would not have permitted that, wouldn't permit it today. It, it, I, I love it how prophets say, I never do this. I never, I never do this. I never just say, thus saith the Lord. I never prophesy. I never do that. I just, I never see visions. Mike Bickle said the same thing. I never see visions. I never do this. I never talk about these things. I, you know, I, I just, it's just so out of character for me. And then they proceed to unveil their vision, their dream, their trip to heaven, their Jesus appeared to them, prophecy, the snake descending, the asp descending into Mike Bickle's office, all those things. Go see all my previous coverage. This is a long standing coverage of this whole thing. These guys say that all the time. I never do this. I never talk about my visions and dreams. It's the only time that Jesus ever visited me. It's the only visitation I've ever had. This is the only time I never do this. Really? Really? Please. Really? 
you guys in the prophetic stream. I never do this. It's just so tiresome, honestly, because they're lying. They're, they don't never do this. They always do it. It's the mantra. It's the MO. It's the modus operandi of these guys to always prophesy. Always. It, there's this context you're missing somehow. This, the, behold, saith the Lord, this crown of kingship, saith the Lord. What? They just start off like it, in the deep end somewhere. And you're like, where are we? <laughs> what, what are we talking about? The crown of kingship. Okay. You have understood the ministry of priesthood. So the priesthood was done away with in the perfect priesthood of Christ for us on our behalf. The ministry of prophet, priest, and king was fulfilled ultimately in Jesus Christ. No other priest necessary. So he's fulfilled the ministry of priesthood. So, so he's moving on, I guess, from because he's mastered priesthood. He's going to move on from priesthood to kingship. Thus saith the Lord. Another saith the Lord. Oh, the priesthood and kinghood, kingship king thing work hand in hand. So I guess he's not really giving up the, the priesthood. He's they're working hand in hand now. So he's just taking on another ministry, priesthood and kingship. Behold, say the Lord, a greater and new dimension is upon thee. Even now say the Lord, behold, the sword shall be in one hand, say the Lord, and you will hold the crown with another hand. Say the Lord. He's going to hold the sword in one hand and a crown in the other. What? The Lord, for the enemy will not be able to take it from thee, saith the Lord. For behold, you will battle. So, and so you'll have that, thus more saith the Lord, saith the Lord. You'll have that uh, sword and the crown in one hand and, and the other, and the enemy will not be able to take it from you. Okay. With the enemy in days to come, saith the Lord, but do not be weary, for you will win victory, and you will be happy, and you will laugh at the devil's face, saith the Lord. For behold, my children, I have called thee, I have chosen thee, and thou hast obeyed, saith the Lord. And even miracles shall More saith the Lord. through your hands, my servant. Even greater healing shall... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me go back here a little bit. Greater... Miracles, miracles. Walk, walk through your hands, my chosen thee, and thou hast obeyed, say the Lord. And even miracles shall walk, walk through your hands, my Okay, now that's interesting. Miracles. Now, Mike Pickle doesn't claim to be a miracle worker. Greater miracles. So, hit me up. Is there any sort of uh, place where Mike Pickle has done greater miracles or miracles at all? I mean, does he even, I don't think he even claims, he even claimed that of himself. So, um, I, he's not like Bill Johnson who can just kind of like throw people out and, and he walks through the audience and boom, and they're getting, everybody's getting the anointing, the miracle anointing. I don't think that's him. Correct me if I'm wrong. If he's actually healed people or claimed to heal people or people have been claimed to be healed by him, this is then a false prophecy. Um, you know, anyways, I wonder if that has any semblance of reality. I don't think so because <laughs> these guys don't heal anybody they're frauds and they're false and they're fakes so yeah hit me up if you have any kind of uh thought on that servant even greater healing shall come to thee say the lord and you will no longer hesitate and waver to prophesy say even greater healing so i guess he's talking about the greater healings than christ hmm ah, he doesn't say christ but greater healings maybe just greater healings than the next joe apostle or joe prophet but yeah that's uh wonder where what he's talking about there i don't think bickle ever really claimed to be a healer or someone who can heal so the lord for prophecy shall come in greater dimensions in your life say the lord revelation of my prophetic utterance shall take place say the lord for however that did happen well he claimed it happened that he had got more and better, better revelations, more prophetic revelations, more this, that, the other. He has claimed quite a bit of wild and crazy revelations because he's a wild and crazy guy. So he, yeah, claimed to go to heaven, claimed to see Jesus face to face. Jesus told him in Egypt that you're going to change the face of Christianity in one generation. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Please go back and check out all my previous episodes. I've covered it and their prophetic history, which they have removed. He's claimed all that. He's claimed revelations, deeper revelations. And that's the idea of the prayer movement is to get deeper revelations. Behold, saith the Lord, 
continue to keep your eyes on me, say the Lord, for I shall overwhelm thee. I shall flood thee with great wisdom, say the Lord, and you will have answers for every problem and solution, say the Oh, they'll have answers for every problem and solution, saith the Lord. So, more saith the Lord. For behold, you stop the Lord. worrying, you stop being over concerned, and behold, a new mantle shall be upon thee, saith the Lord. A new mantle. Mm -hmm. It's all about mantles, the mantle of Elijah, the mantle of Elisha, the mantle of this, the mantle of that, the mantle of John G. Lake. That's why they go fetch the mantles at graves. Check my last episode out. About the grave soaking, they go and get those mantles at the graves because where else can you fetch the mantle of someone who's already dead, who you did not know? Go fetch them at a grave. So he's going to get new mantles. Lord, Lord, we lay hands upon our ministers. And they lay hands on him, stretch out their hands Hallelujah. to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is for both of you. New dimensions for both of you, Diane. You're not going to be left out. <laughs> New dimensions. Hallelujah. Because when, when there's a wife married to a king, she receives a crown too. When there's a wife married to a king, she receives a crown too. Hmm. He's a king with a sword in one hand and a crown in the other. Wait, is he wearing the crown or is he just holding the crown? Because um, don't kings wear crowns as well? See how just convoluted and a total mess of th these prophetic utterances. They are, they have no basis in reality. They don't reflect anything scripturally. They are scriptural phrases pulled out of their context and smashed together in a prophetic jambalaya. Hmm, that'd be fun. A prophetic jambalaya. Jambalaya is yummy, but prophetic jambalaya will make you throw up. Uh, cloud guy don't feel so good. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, oh. we minister to them. Speaking tongues. <laughs> that, that was a quick one. Just a kind of a, just in between, you know, like. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just kind of right in the middle, like, you know, right. Right in the meantime, like, um, <laughs> let me hear that again. That's that was good. That was a good little. That's yeah, a that's tricky to get those tongues in there and the in the in the pauses, you know. So here we go. Hallelujah. I mock because it's mockable. That's not the spiritual gift of tongues. That is a made-up construct. Tongues. In the biblical record were other unknown languages that you had supernaturally spoken that are languages that existed. So these guys are making stuff up. You can just do that in the meantime. I mean, anybody can do that, honestly. Like, I just did it. And that is not the gift of tongues. You can just create stuff that sounds like gibberish. It is gibberish. It's not an actual language. That is not the spiritual biblical gift of tongues. I have an old, old video on that. You're welcome to go back and have a look at that. So this is him making tongues up in the meantime, in between, you know, like, okay, in between my prayer for them and uh, kind of the dead space, he just kind of throws in a few tongue salad you know to them we give them blessing we give them strength we give them life and we give them joy above all we give them protection in the name of jesus we lose them we give we do this we we loosen them we thank you for what you're doing we thank you it shall do by your spirit in jesus name we 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 do it, we do it, we do it. It's not a prayer. That's a proclamation. That's not a prayer. That's the new order of the latter rain. All this stuff, when I actually look at these videos, I was communicating with someone and said, man, it just is all new order of the latter rain language. That's what it is. It's all this commanding, demanding, proclamation type prayer. And it just doesn't, and, and, and all the language of the, when you'll see Bob Jones in a moment. Wow. So that's new order of the latter rain type theology, proclaiming, demanding. And then here we have, let me just roll over here. Austin Roberts, thanks again, man, so much for your posting these things. Where did you find this? This is so great. So this is, I don't know who this is. In this, I don't know if this is Kansas City Fellowship or if this is already IHOP. I don't think so because it's a little early and maybe even the, the, the late 80s still. But here is whoever this gentleman is with the mustache, they are accepting Augustine Alcala as a prophet of God. Here we go. You know, the scripture says, he who receives a prophet in the name of the prophet receives a prophet's reward. 
And uh, I hope I have the freedom for most second. <laughs> he says, I like that. I wonder if he's doing this. He says, I hope I have the freedom to accept this as this man as a prophet. Um, and then I think he wait, says, wait a minute, maybe I have, do I have the permission to do this? Can I ask him? I think he might a is asking him if he has the permission to receive him as a prophet. So let's have a look. He's like, oh yeah, sure, man. You're welcome to accept me as a prophet. The other night when uh, Mike took Bob and Augustine and the nursery staff, out to dinner and then we came back and we prayed and we prayed for them and Augustine got a, a prophecy for himself that said that there would be a body that would receive him. <laughs> That's so great. A prophet prophesied for himself that there would be a body, a body of Christ or a body of believers, a body, that church body, I guess. I think it's Kansas City Fellowship. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know the history. I don't know the timetables, but... <clears throat> He said that Augustine had a prophecy about himself, that a church body would accept him and receive him. <laughs> it's like, wow. Talk about self-fulfilling prophecies. These guys, wow. I don't know the guy, but that seems a smidge, just a smidge arrogant. Just a smidge. And um, to me, it was us. So I'd like to receive him now in the name of the Lord. So we receive the... To me, it was us. So he, he said, Augustine prophesied that a body would, would receive him. And he says, to me, that prophecy was us. In the name of a prophet. Amen. Amen. Good night. Thank you. All right. So they received him as a prophet. Augustine was a prophet. He prophesied about himself that he would be received by somebody. <laughs> so they did it. Here we go. Here's This is quite some awesome stuff. Thanks again, Austin, for posting this. Where did you find this? It's amazing. Here we go. This is Bob Jones and Augustine like having a tandem prophetic utterance. Um, competition, I'm going to say. <laughs> starting off with gibberish tongues. Start Again, like I said, starting off with gibberish tongues. That's gibberish. That's not the spiritual biblical gift of tongues. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. He's got a good vibrato. He has a nice, lovely vibrato. It's coming here. Here comes a young Bob Jones blithering on about nonsense. This is all New Order of the Latter Rain. If you, if you listen closely, it's New Order of the Latter Rain terminology, language, etc. Here we go. Of opening of your ears. This is the ear of, op Every ear of opening your ears. It will allow the Holy Spirit to clean their ears out will hear for themselves. <clears throat> so the Holy Spirit's going to clean your ears out. All right. Even this night, many of your ears have been cleaned out so that hearing that you hear and that seeing that you see. They take these little biblical phrases and just jam into their prophetic nonsense. This is prophetic nonsense. You will hear from the Lord yourself. And then when you go to witness to your brother and sister, there'll be that unity like you've never seen before because your brother and sister have heard the same thing. This is going to bring faith in you like never before. Just as a recap of previous things, Bob Jones is a nutcase quack. He's a total wacko. He is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Huh, I am cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I am cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Puff cereal, the chocolate you find of a good breakfast. He's a nut job, crazy, blithering maniac. And anybody who follows his prophecies is following a false prophet who was a crazy maniac who took people on trips to heaven, who sexually abused women, asking them to disrobe in prophetic sessions with himself alone. The false prophecies are so crazy, and I hope you'll get a picture of them here of how crazy it is. I also as I wave my hand, and I don't know who this is falling on, but there's anointing falling on some of you. There you go. He's going to wave his hand, and there's an anointing falling on you. That is total nonsense. Every single person is anointed in Jesus Christ. I will say it till I'm blue in the face, until you get the point, until you ignore these guys with their anointings. Every single person in Jesus Christ is anointed. He doesn't have an extra special anointing. 
You don't have an extra special anointing. Benny Hinn doesn't have an extra special anointing. His coat is not anointed. Whoever else, Bill Johnson, any of these people in this movement, they're no more anointed than you or I. We are all anointed, and you're, the anointing work is the salvific work of Jesus Christ for us. You have no more anointing. The anointing is, for them, it's like the force. It's sort of like the Star Wars force. They wave the force, and the force, you can receive the force. May the force be with you. May the anointing be with you. That is a construct. It is not biblical. And when he waves his hand across the audience and people receive an anointing, that is false. He does not have that power. Neither does any man have that power to wave their hand and send you some spiritual power. That is not possible. And it's not a Christian practice. And they put it off as a Christian practice here. And that anointing's fallen on you is miracles. The anointing is falling on you for miracles. Miracles. No. Nope. This within the year. It's fall Be interested. Uh, within the year, the anointing is falling on him. Within the year, God is going to use you for miracles. So, what year was this? I'm not sure. Looks like 80s. Don't don't know. I think. I wonder if Austin likes to put the videos into black and white. I wonder if this was a, a video in color at some point. Yeah. Up on some of you, it would be those whom God has prepared. But I feel it as the power was upon my hand. As I wave it, some of you are going to be used in it. It's a loosening of the gifts. Don't just pay attention to one because I felt the fire. So he's going to loose the gifts. Neither he nor any other man has the power to loose gifts. They're going to, people talk about loosening the Holy Spirit. No man has that power. The sovereign God of the entire universe is the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You or I cannot loose him. He is a sovereign God who works at his sovereign will, and neither you nor I can do anything to loose him on people. But Bob Jones claims he has that power. He does not. That's what usually comes in miracles. But the Spirit of the Lord is just waving back and forth on you now. And the Holy Spirit is nine gifts. So the Holy Spirit is w going back and forth on you right now. Yeah. And that's what's flowing back over you now. And these nine gifts always move by hearing. So he says that the Holy Spirit has nine gifts. That is not accurate. So Bob Jones is saying there's nine spiritual gifts. What he's talking about are the nine sign gifts or the miraculous gifts. That is not true. There are not just nine gifts. Some people say around 23, 24. I would be maybe a little more reserved, but at least there are these. Leadership, administration, teaching, knowledge, wisdom, prophecy. Now, if you think that gift is, if you're a cessationist, you would say that gift has ceased. Discernment, exhortation, shepherding, faith, evangelism, apostleship. If you are a true cessationist, you would say that that gift has ceased, that that is no longer an active gift because the canon of scripture is closed and we need no more revelation. So apostles, when they were when they were active, the 12 apostles, they gave us the canon of scripture. And when the canon of scripture was closed, we have no more revelation necessary to be received from God. And so basically when you are a continuationist, you would say that apostleships are necessary because you, there is continuing revelation. I reject that idea. I'm not that type of continuationist. I'm a seatbelt continuationist for sure. Now, someone said the other day, made a comment on the other day, and Richard takes one step closer to becoming a cessationist. So, I mean, this is the balance. Do, do we need revelation? No. No, an apostle who says, I, have revel I receive revelation from God, I reject I reject that type of apostle. That is not the apostles that we have anymore to this day. So I am sort of a cessationist in that the gifts have ceased in some sense. The gift of apostleships, where an apostle receives a revelation from God and speaks the revelation to the people for their understanding, for their obedience. I'm not that kind of continuationist. So there are no more apostleships who are receiving revelation from God or prophets who are speaking as the mouthpiece of God and saying, thus saith the Lord. 
we have the revelation of God. So I'm a continuationist with seatbelt, you know, sort of ideas. So service helps, mercy, giving, uh, hospitality. He's ignoring all those. So Bob Jones says nine gifts, and he's talking about all this, the miraculous ones. And on here is not tongues, I don't think. Is there tongues here? Yeah, I don't see the gift of tongues and the gift of healing. If you're a full continuationist, you would say that all those gifts, all those nine uh, supernatural gifts are still in operation. And But he's that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the nine gifts of the Spirit. He's ignoring the rest. He's ignoring helps. He's ignoring hospitality. He's ignoring wisdom. He's ignoring teaching. He's ignoring preaching. Those are all spiritual gifts. So here we go. So the rhema is flowing in this place right now. The rhema is flowing. Of your life. And the first that you... The rhema word is a word that you can say that's a timely word or something like that. It's the Greek word uh, that you could possibly get it wrong. It's sort of like a heard word, and you kind of like, you got to be on the right wavelength with the person and blah, blah, blah. It's just gobbledygook. Hear, the first of the rhema that you hear in this new year will be for yourself. Usually the second is for the one that's closest to you in the family. Okay, you're going to get a rhema word. You're going to get a rhema word for yourself first. That's how it works always. You get the first for yourself, this rhema word. Then you get the word for the person in your family closest to you. Huh? Biblical chapter and verse? There's none. Not into the church, but there's a beautiful spirit. And I feel him on the back of your necks. With the spirit of the Lord on the back of your necks, you don't have to worry about depression or who's backing you up. That's hilarious. So he's talking about goosebumps. You get the goosebumps and they start on the back of your neck and that's the Holy Spirit. Really? Really? Really, really, really? Really. Goosebumps are not the Holy Spirit. Goosebumps are a physiological response to some kind of stimuli. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's a physical response to some kind of stimuli. It's your hair follicles standing up on their end. That's what it is. It's not the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the so back God of your neck. So in this way, he would be bringing you out of, some of you, the reason you haven't moved in these gifts before is because you've been afraid of them. Uh-huh. Fear. We're all afraid of them. Of moving in, in the purity of the gifts. And as you got into the spirit tonight. So the purity of the gifts. So when Bob Jones prophesied falsely, is he operating in the purity of the spirit, spiritual gifts? Is he operating in the pure, when when Mike Bickle made his false prophecies, and he, he claims that 80% of the prophecies in the prophetic stream are throwaways. Is that the purity of the, of the gift? Does the Spirit of God work in purity and only provide 20% accuracy? Uh, my buddy David Lovey, when I interviewed him, he said that Mike Bickle's personal liaison said that he only knows of three prophecies in their entire history that were probably maybe somehow accurate. Whoa. Uh, is that the purity of the spiritual gifts, Bob Jones? Just ask it. That fear is losing, and I feel it just flowing on the back of your necks. I feel it flowing on the back of your necks. So many of you are hearing tonight. The rest of you are going to hear. When you get alone, you're going to hear, you're going to hear. Okay, so many of you are hearing tonight. The rest of you are going to hear once you get home. Just kind of make time for that. The rhema is flowing. Spirit of the Lord is moving back and forth over you right now. He's going to wave his hand. The rhema is flowing. The rhema's flowing. Say something. Understand. Here comes Lord, Augustine. See, Bob is a seer and I'm a seer. Bob is a seer and I'm a seer. Wow. At least they admit it. You know, at least they admit that they're seers. So here's a Got Questions article. What is a seer in the Bible? A seer was often paralleled or another name for a prophet, but they typically saw visions. Now, there were only very few people who saw visions and as, as prophets or as seers, as seers from God. And here, the term seer is never mentioned in the New Testament. There were often Old Testament seers who were false prophets. Most often, they were called seers. So a seer is typically a false prophet. I can think of Balaam and his donkey. He was a seer. He was a false prophet. These guys admit it. They come out and say they're seers, and the seer is not a New Testament concept. We have elders, pastors, deacons. 
Those are our leaders. We do not have seers in the New Testament. You can be a seer. They are not servants of God, not in the New Testament. So just as a side note there, Augustine admits he's a seer and that he and Bob Jones are both seers, but that is not a New Testament function. You don't see it anywhere in the New Testament. And seers in the Old Testament often were false prophets and could see things. They could actually see things through demonic or occultic or other powers. And there are seers today. You think of fortune tellers, you think of card readers, you think of omen readers, you think of all sorts of occultic practices. Those people are trying to see the future, see visions to try to help you, to give you some kind of wisdom or power or whatever. That's what a seer is. And the Old Testament seer could possibly see things, see visions that God was giving him, but those were typically prophets. And they were giving a, let's say, a word picture, or God showed them a vision, the vision of the dry bones, for instance. Those were seers who could see those things, but the New Testament has no seers. There, that is not a New Testament function, and they are false prophets for that, for claiming to be seers. It is not anywhere to be found in the New Testament, and we should avoid that term. That is terms for occult practices. So let's keep going. At least they admit it. But I'm a preacher, and he's not a preacher. See? Isn't that real simple? So Bob Jones is, is a seer, I'm a seer, but he's not. I'm a preacher, and he's not a preacher. I, this is interesting. This is how they throw their weight around. Look, I'm a seer. He's a seer. I'm a seer, but I'm a preacher. He's not a preacher. It, Bro, what kind of pastor talks like this? What kind of preacher talks like this? Not a true preacher, not a preacher of the scriptures, not someone who's teaching you God's will and his word. This is pe these are people who are trying to control and manipulate you. So if God decides to use you in miracles, doesn't mean he's gonna make you a preacher. Doesn't mean you're gonna be an evangelist. Don't limit the Lord in your thinking. Say, well, I wonder if I'm supposed to go back. I wonder if I'm going to be an evangelist. I wonder if I'm going to be a prophet. I'm going to be an apostle now. I'm going to be a teacher now. Prophet's, Prophet's apostles, teachers. A preacher. But he's a prophet. Mm -hmm. I'm a preacher. So if God decides to use you through a miracle, don't let your zeal go before you. Mm. Hello. Don't let your zeal go before you. The Lord told me that. Don't let your zeal. Another. The Lord told me, thus saith the Lord. Share this with the people. Don't let your zeal go before you. You're still going to be who you are. Yes. But God's going to work through you. When the, suddenly there's a miracle right there at work. <coughs> hmm? How do you think the multitudes will come to God? Hmm? Not to me. Not to ourselves. See? So don't allow that in your thinking. <coughs> Amen. Whatever the raiment tells you to be at that time. So You'll be what whatever the raiment the tells you to be. be like the manna. You'll get it every day for your life and you'll live it out. The raiment is going to tell you what to be, just like the manna. The manna in the wilderness, you'll get it every day of your life. So start expecting that raiment to come to you every morning as you wait on the Lord to direct your entire day in the Lord and just be what he wants you to be that day. <laughs> be what he wants you to be that day. So I think that's the end of that. Guys, don't do that. Look to Christ in the scriptures every day. Wake up, open your Bible, pray, and spend time with him. He will tell you in his word what you are to do that day. Don't expect this rhema word, blah, 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 gobbledygook. This is nonsense. Look to the scriptures. Open your Bible, read it every day. He will direct your paths. Not this gobbledygook, supernatural, whatever. All right, so moving on. Hope City celebrated 25 years of Mike Bickle, with ties to Mike Bickle, celebrated 25 years of IHOP Casey. However, Mike Bickle was not there. There were Bickles there, apparently, and they thanked the Bickle family. So this is Isaac Bennett, and he rehashes the entire IHOP KC prophetic history. Here we go. But the Lord spoke in a very unique way through a man named Bob Jones way back in the early 80s. No, he didn't. 
God did not speak through Bob Jones. He's a false prophet. All his prophecies are make-believe. You are obeying a false prophet, Isaac. And that man named Bob Jones, he was a prophetic man. He came to Mike Bickle, who's the founder of IHOPKC, and he said some very... It's hard for me to believe that they are bringing up Mike Bickle as someone who could have even heard from God the entire time while he was sexually grooming and was sexually abusing minors. That's hard to believe. That's hard to believe they'll bring him up and keep bringing him up as someone who would have, sorry, even had any kind of spiritual role in this organization anymore. I can't believe they have not completely disavowed him, but they keep putting him up there because if you don't have the prophetic history and it's not part, then you have nothing. I hope Casey has nothing if they don't have this prophetic history. So we have to re, re bring it up and remind the people all the time because it's the part of their prophetic manipulation. Very unusual phrases that at the time did not make sense at all, but today they make a lot more sense, and I guarantee in our future they're going to make even more sense. Okay. He told Mike, you will they be make part sense. of a worldwide youth movement of prophetic singers and musicians. They're going to be used in power evangelism, and they're going to help mobilize prayer for Israel in many nations. And then he says this, the Lord is going to place you next to Harry Truman's property as a sign and as a wonder. So we have this land, Harry Truman's land. We have these words that were given to us in a supernatural way that no one could manipulate. No one could make this happen and unfold in the way that it did. Except, you know, I just, uh, no one can ma manipulate it, except that people did what, what, what those things, those prophecies entailed. They just went out and did them. Like the guy, the English guy who said, Two people came to him and said, thus saith the Lord, you're going to go to Mike Bickle and you're going to start a prayer movement. So he went to Mike Bickle and started a prayer. He obeyed the prophecy. When people say these prophetic words over people, they will actually do them a large majority of the time because someone prophesied that thing. You know what I mean? Does, does that make sense? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy because the people have told you as thus saith the Lord, go do this. You're going to start the prayer movement with Mike Bickle. So he's like, well, I guess I got two people said it independently from each other. I guess I better go do that. So they fulfill the prophecies because people prophesied them, just because people prophesied them. We're sitting here today seeing promises that have come to pass before our eyes. There's 24 7 prayer with singers and musicians. It's going around the earth. Believers in Asia can watch it on smartphones. These were all things that were prophesied back in 19. I think that was actually a wrong wrong interpretation or whatever. Someone said that, yeah, it was not. It was on their watches or something. I don't know. <laughs> These prophecies are like, whatever. Okay, so, yeah. So, something about that detail is not correct. <laughs> We're right by Harry Truman's land. And the Lord says, you've got a purpose to be intercessors before me for the purposes of God, Israel, and the Jewish people. Beloved, we can't back down from this. We can't step away from this. So, that's it. No matter what happens, no matter how many sexual abuse we have in our Paul Kane, Bob Jones, Mike Bickle are all sexual abusers and sexual predators, probably. Now, they don't know anybody, uh, other sexual cases of Mike, uh, Bob Jones, be, be, but that's the ones we know about. But if you've asked someone to disrobe in front of you, something else has happened up to that point. You're not just doing that so brashly and so crazily. You're probably an abuser. So these guys, my, uh, Paul Kane as well, um, an abuser. So they would rather not let go of the prophetic utterances of these abusers and say, you know what? No, those guys were false prophets. We're going to let go of the whole thing. The whole thing, the whole foundation of 24 seven prayer is prophesied. So they, their, their complete existence is based on those prophecies. 24 seven prayer is the prophecy. And so if they denied the prophecies of those guys, they would have to cease to exist. It's what it is. They are built on the prophecies of these guys and they can't not. I know that there's confusion. I know that there's pressure. The reason, the reason. Why, why is there pressure? What's the pressure? What are we, what are we talking about? What are we talking about, Isaac? What pressure? Is there pressure because your founder was a sexual predator for many, 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 many years. I mean, since the founding of your thing, actually the one we just watched was he was abusing someone who was 14 years old. That was before IHOP Casey was founded. So what's the pressure, Isaac? What are we talking about? What pressure? Why are you under pressure? 
or standing for God's purposes for Israel isn't because of IHOP KC or Bob Jones or Mike Bickle. It's because it's in the word of God. We're standing for the purposes of Israel. You know, it's like, um, like if without IHOP KC, the purposes that God has for Israel will not take place. Do you believe that? If you were a part of IHOP, and I know a lot of my viewers are now a part of IHOP, did you believe at the time that if IHOP KC did not exist, God's purposes for Israel could not take place? Did you believe that? Hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear that. I bet you did. You believed, and if you're still there probably at IHOP KC, you probably still believe that the purposes of Israel cannot take place. The purposes God has for Israel cannot take place without your intercession. I bet you believe it. That is that's that's a that goes against the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. He does not need you or I. It's like they believe they, that's the quickening doctrine. You believe you're quickening and hastening the day of Christ by your intercession. You are making God compelling God to do something that he would not have otherwise done. You're compelling God to intercede for Israel, To you're interceding for Israel, and thus God will do that thing by your intercession for him. We do the things and we believe the things that we see in the word of God. If it's not in the word of God, then throw it out. Let the Lord... Let me help you, Isaac. That's not in the word of God, so throw it out. 24-7 prayer is not necessary. It's an unnecessary burden you're placing on Christians, so throw it out. You're interceding for Israel. Israel will become something that that that, that God has says will happen uh, because of your intercession. That's not in the Bible. Throw it out. I'll help you out there. It's all there. It's all I've I've done the work. I've done the fifteen podcasts. All of it is unbiblical. Throw it out. Throw it Lord out. Lord, handle the rest. Let Him handle all the details and where we're at and what building we're in and what the name of the ministry is. I mean, let the Lord sort all that out. It's okay. No, I'm sure you'll sort that out because y'all are sorting it out right now. You're 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 renaming, you're rebranding, you're going to reopen as something else. You're going to do a justice ministry for people victims of trafficking. I mean, come on, you're sorting it out. The Lord did say, "I have zeal for Zion." The Lord did say, "I'll have watchmen on the wall for Israel." He did say, "I'm going to use a Gentile church to provoke Israel to spiritual jealousy that will result in her salvation in the day of the Lord." He said those things, not us. Okay, they're holding on to the prophetic, even though they're embarrassed about it some way, even though they scrubbed it from their website, they're still holding on to the prophetic history as being from God. So then here's Austin Roberts. In 2004, Mike Bickle, Rick Joyner, and Jack Deere publicly exposed Paul Kane. In 2006, Mike announced that Paul was banned from IHOP KC mission base, and if anyone saw him, they needed to notify leadership immediately. Why? In 2019, when Paul died, Rick Joyner concluded that Paul never repented or changed. Hmm. But Mike began publicly speaking about him again and praising him. And Mike called him his true spiritual father. So here, let's have a listen. That was 2004. So for 15 years, I've never told his stories because I didn't want to get some young people excited and to chase him down. And I didn't know what might happen. And, and I don't think anything bad would happen but as a shepherd why would it be problematic if young people would chase him down hmm. just wondering but i didn't want to ever take that chance and now that paul is with the lord there's rick joiner and paul kane but the nar does not exist there's rick joiner and paul kane rick joiner mike bickle and paul kane they were casey prophets but the nar does not exist don't tell Michael Brown. Lord, he's just shy of his 90th birthdays with the Lord. Yeah, wow. Him with Saddam Hussein. That was also, how was how Paul Kane such an influent, influential person? He was there with Bill Clinton, uh, President Bill Clinton, and there's Saddam Hussein. Wow. There are so many things that happen. Another with in Bill his Clinton. That are an encouragement to me and to those of you that have known. And there's Paul Kane with. Isaac, this Isaac who just spoke. I think that's Isaac Bennett. I'm pretty sure. A little more bearded than a younger fellow, Paul Kane. Him and loved him. And I just feel free now to begin to talk about him. He feels free because he's dead. He's free to talk about him because he's dead because he won't actually send people to him. Jack Deere wrote a letter, wrote an open letter lately 
which was so scathing. It's incredible that basically says he never was used by God. So here we go. Another post from Danny Parks. So here's Mike Bickle talking about basically don't ever critique anybody. Here we go. Love your enemies. Okay. We know that. It won't do it that much, but yeah, we get that. Bless, use your words. Don't carry the accusation narrative against them. The Lord knows. Mm -hmm. Bless them as much as it's truth, but you're not going to expose them. Love your enemies. Don't carry the accusation narrative against them. Never accuse anybody, especially if you're Mike Bickle and you run an international house of prayer and a 24-7 prayer movement. Here we go. Here is the letter from Danny Parks post to this. Thanks, Danny. This is a letter from Derek Prince to or an open letter to Kansas City Fellowship. I just want to point out Derek Prince's conclusions regarding Kansas City Fellowship. Here is first conclusion. The material circulated by Kansas City Fellowship contains many statements which have no basis in the scripture and are frequently contrary to scripture. Now remember, Mike Bickle was the pastor of that church. Some of the purported revelations could be described as absurd and even blasphemous. Mike Bickle continued on with those such revelations and prophecies and the like. He just continued on with those things. So uh, second conclusion was some of the accounts of events and situations put out by Kansas City Fellowship have been proved to be untrue but have never been retracted. Okay. The accounts of events, the, the prophetic history, I'm sure. Here is his third conclusion. Derek Prince's conclusion was the overall effect of the material is to divert attention away from Jesus Christ and the scriptures and towards subjective experiences and human personalities, i.e. Mike Bickle and maybe other Kansas City prophets at the time. So, and then we have a final conclusion here. One of his conclusions, the last conclusion was the circulation of material from Kansas City Fellowship will inevitably expose the body of Christ to much error and confusion. Yes, that's happened. And many of you now who even watch my coverage of this are in deep confusion, and we're still praying for you that God would bring you out. He would bring you out of the prophetic movement bring you out of the new apostolic reformation, bring you out of the confusion, bring you out of the convoluted mess that has been built by this ministry and put you on solid ground, his word. And so he's right. Derek Prince was right. It has caused much confusion in the body of Christ. Here we go. We're going to wrap up, man. I'm sorry. I'm going long today. Just wanted to cover everything that was out there. So here we go. Here's something from Woke Preacher Clips. We're just going through my Twitter feed. And this was a wild video, a prayer to the divine mother. Here we go. As we celebrate, let's pray. Everybody repeat after me and then I'll disappear. (laughs) Divine mother God. God. Whoops. We rejoice and smile. For the seen and unknown joys of parenthood. For the seen and unknown joys of parenthood. We mourn and ache. We mourn and ache. For the seen and unseen suffering in parenthood. For the seen and unseen suffering in parenthood. We are I do mourn and ache for my seen and unseen suffering in my parenthood. <laughs> I gotta laugh, sorry. Uh I have suffering. I have to wake up and get my kids going and make them dinner and make them lunch and make <laughs> it's such a suffering, the seen and the unseen suffering. Divine Mother God. So, what blasphemy! Are engraved in your palms, God. We are engraved in your palms, God. Thank you for holding us together. Thank you for holding us together. Amen. All right. So, Divine Mother God, God is never in the all of Scripture ever described with the personal pronoun, the female personal pronoun. He is always described with the masculine male pronoun. He is not a mother. He is it's like just, just total blasphemy, bro. Just total blasphemy. And then, yeah, and I, I do 
I do sympathize with him on the par parental suffering, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Protestia. This is quite a quite a trip. Prosperity teacher Jonathan Shuttlesworth gives perhaps the worst and grossest analogy in the history of Christianity. So he actually admits it. So it's pretty wild. So here we go. Anyone ever had to go to the bathroom bad? Yes, I have. Like bad? You ignored your stomach's first warning shot and thought I could make it home, and it was a huge mistake. I swung into a Chick-fil-A, opened the door. You ever done that before? Yeah, you ever done that before? You, you, you've you ignored your stomach's first warning shot and you barely made it or, you know, should have gone left earlier. Who knows? Yeah. Open the door of the bathroom. There was one stall and it was occupied. I pounded on it. Went, get out now. They said, but I, before they could say I'm you. Bro, if you're that dude in Chick-fil-A and someone's pounding on your stall door, get out now. <laughs> this is the truth. I said, right. get out. Like same way I talked to a devil. Get out. They skirt. They open. So he, he said the same way he talked to a devil. He said, get out. <laughs> okay. That would, that would have been pretty scary, I guess. They scurried out with their pants. There's an urgency is what I'm trying to say that most Christians don't have. There's no, oh, Lord, in your time, in your will. But I pray the same urgency I felt that day. He's kind of walking. You notice how he's walking like hunched over? It looks like he needs to go to the bathroom right now. Like, maybe he should take his own advice. <laughs> find a bathroom. <laughs> Chick-fil-A, you're going to find, and whatever represents that bathroom door, that person that's locking you out of your destiny, this is the worst analogy in the history of Christianity. But let's go in there. You're going to pound that door open and evict that person from the public bathroom and fulfill your purpose. Oh, yeah, man. Evict that person from the public bathroom and fulfill your purpose, your destiny. Oh, my goodness. He's actually said it. This is the worst analogy in all of Christian history, so that's great. <laughs> it is. It is. It's, and it's unbiblical because you don't claim your destiny. You, you, don't, you don't change your destiny. You don't pound the door of the bathroom stall and go claim your destiny. It's all a mess and all a construct. So that will do it for today. This has been just a broad sweeping stroke of what's going on with IHOP, what's out there, what my Twitter feed told me uh, was going on. All those old videos were quite, quite telling, quite informative. Thank you guys for posting stuff. You know, I serve at the will of the people and y'all are informing me and I'm just seeing what's out there. And I just thank you for keeping this in the forefront and putting IHOP's feet to the fire. They need to still do a third-party investigation. I don't think they will. I think they're over. I think they're done. I think they're trying to rebrand, move on, close the doors. They're hemorrhaging money. They said a while ago they were doing losing $500,000 a month or something like that. That's a half a million dollars a month. So whatever is going on, they're done. They're moving on, I think, to the not no third-party investigation. They're just going to move on. But keep pressing. Keep trying. And I hope we can get some movement. I hope we can move the needle. I hope we can get people out of that cult. It is a cult. And you see it here. It's pretty obvious that this movement is a cult who manipulates people with the tool of prophecy. I just hope and pray that you will ignore these teachers and leaders. And I hope I've given you enough material and, and, and food for thought to go on and ignore them. So that'll do it for this episode of Church Entrepreneurs Podcast. You can find out more about my ministry at richardpmore.net. I also blog at richardpmore.blogspot.com. You're welcome to follow me on X, formerly Twitter. My handle is at richardpmore23. Please email us if you have any questions or comments at churchapreneurs at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, comments, or thoughts, please reach out on one of those platforms. Until next time, God bless you and take care. Mm -hmm.